All rise for a general session. 46th Judicial Circuit is now in session. The Honorable Judges, Judge Devin is presiding. You may be seated. Prosecution, you also or introduce yourselves, please. My name is Damon Zamora, prosecutor of the Chris Donovan statement, and I'll be given the opening statement and a direct examination of Therese Parker. Hi, I'm Maddie Beckus. I'm on the prosecution for the Donovan case. I will be exa direct examining Randy Smith, Marty Bryant, and Detective Pat Jones, and I will also be giving the closing statement. My name is Ian Kitts. I'm prosecuting for the Donovan case, and I'll be cross-examining all witnesses. I'm Reese Parker. I'm Marty Bryant. I'm Randy Smith. I am Detective Pat Jones. Defense. Hi, I'm Max Freeberg. I'm the defense attorney for the Chris Donovan case. I'll be doing the cross for Randy Smith and Marty Bryant and the direct for Chris Donovan and Jesse Martin. Hello, my name is Alex Davies. I'm the defense attorney for Chris Donovan. I will be doing the cross questions for Detective Pat Jones and then the direct questions for Aaron Grant in the closing statement. Hello, my name is Garrett Thompson. Um, I am a defense attorney for Chris Donovan. I'll be doing cross-examination for Reese Parker, as well as direct examination of Alex Johnson. I'm defense witness Chris Donovan. I am the defendant. I'm Alex Johnson. I'm Aaron Grant. I'm Jesse Martins, a defense witness. Prosecution, please give us your opening statement. Your Honor, again, my name is Damien Zamora, the prosecutor representing the people of the state of California. In this action, I would like to begin with the charges that we are pressing against Chris Donovan. Count two being interference with a traffic device, California Vehicle Section 21464A, and three counts of involuntary manslaughter, California Penal Code Section 192B, of Jonathan Cooper, Mike Denise, and Denise, or sorry, Mike and Denise Richards. Now start with the jogger, Randy Smith. Mr. Smith, who runs casually, started his run on the night of the crime scene, July 11th, 1997, at 8 p.m., and started running past the Elm Street Interstate off ramp around 8.15 p.m., when suddenly he had saw a suspicious person, which the facts will show that the suspicious person was Chris Donovan, standing by the wrong way, do not enter sign. Smith had claimed the person was staring at the back of the sign and as well as wiggling it. He had also claimed the person did not look like any city official and that the person was wearing a burgundy and gold Santa Eleanor University sweatshirt along with jeans. Smith tried to see what the uh, person was doing near the sign, but didn't want to look obvious and walked away quietly. At this point, at this point, Smith thinking logically that the person wouldn't do anything if he was there to see it. Smith jogged another two miles until his leg cramped, which is when he started slowing down and going back home. As Smith was passing the Interstate 110 off ramp at Elm Street, looked to see if the wrong way do not enter sign was still there. It was missing. Now this is when things get devastating for Smith as he watches a car driving off the off ramp of the Interstate 110 while a gasoline truck was going down the off ramp. The truck honked, but it was unavoidable and too late. Too late to stop the deaths who were later identified as Mike and Denise Richard, a newly couple on their honeymoon from out of town. And being out of town, the Richards did not know the area and Jonathan Cooper, a truck driver for a company called Academy Oil. As they collided into each another, it caused huge explosions from the gasoline truck and it was instant death for the three of them. Randy Smith instantly ran to the closest payphone to the call 911 and let them know what it would have witnessed. Approximately five to six minutes, the police and fire department had arrived. Smith went to go talk to the officer who was in charge of investigating the accident which was Detective Pat Jones. Randy Smith had told him everything he saw. Before I go into further details about the case, Your Honor, and members of the jury, I would like to take a minute in regards of the innocent lost lives of Jonathan Cooper, Mike, and Denise Richards. Imagine if you were Jonathan Cooper, Cooper's wife, and you got a call in the middle of the night stating that your husband got killed of massive explosions on site from a car crash. There would probably be sounds of sobbing or even screaming to be heard. Then thinking, how are you going to tell the kids? Are you going to hide it until they ask something like, where's his daddy? It's been a while, mommy, I miss him. Or will you tell them the next morning, trying to hold tears back as you tell them the unfortunate news? 
Or what if you were the families of Mike and Denise hearing such tragic news as they were ready to begin their lives together happily and potentially starting a family together in the future who now cannot do so? Because the person wanted to take the sign of the interstate once and again with that person being Chris Donovan, which the evidence will indicate that he causes. The next morning of the crime scene on July 11, 1997, it is heard from Marty Bryant who had came to Santa Eleanor Police Station told Detective Pat Jones about the 4 escort that Chris Donovan is also a part of it and how he, how it was started from a group of kids from Santa and Lenora University that like to collect street signs and the remark that Chris Donovan made about taking the wrong way do not enter sign the day before it went missing, which Chris Donovan does claim that he did not have the wrong way do not enter sign and thought it would be cool to add to his collection and had mentioned that there is a wrong way do not enter sign a few blocks away from the house or a few blocks from the house at the Interstate 110, off-ramp of Elm Street, which is the one that went missing. Chris Donovan says he decided to go see a movie of Alex Johnson at 8.45 p.m. because the 7 p.m. class ended at 8 p.m. It was supposed to be at Alex's house at 8.30 p.m. to make it to the movies on time. Chris Donovan also states that he is running late because he had to go to the library to drop a book off. True? Or is Mr. Donovan trying to make up a story to patch up those 20 minutes he was MIA, and with that time he was MIA, happened to be around the time Randy Smith saw a suspicious person being signed at 8.15 p.m. Brian's description of Donovan to Officer Jones matched what Randy Smith also had given Officer Jones, which was what he was wearing the night of the same scene being burgundy and gold sweatshirt with jeans. Later on, Pat Jones showed up with a couple of other officers at Chris Donovan's house around 1.30 p.m who told Donovan he had a few questions for him about the street sign before Chris had the chance to answer. Officer Jones noticed a street sign leaning against the front door, who immediately walked in to examine it, which came out to be the wrong way do not enter sign. Officer Pat Jones arrested Chris Donovan on site and took him and the sign down to the station. Chris Donovan always denied taking the Interstate 110 exit sign. Officer Jones did properly Mirandize Donovan when they had got to the station. Two days after the arrest, Officer Jones spoke to Reese Parker, a traffic controller for the city of Santa Eleanora. The day of the crime, Parker had checked the signs on the west side of Santa Eleanora, which he has to ensure all the signs are in good condition. Reese Parker had also checked the Interstate 110 exit sign around 5 p.m. and was in good condition at the time. Parker also told Officer Jones about the barcodes on the back of the signs to ensure they are placed in the proper location. When Parker examined the street sign taken from Donovan's house, he identified it as the one taken from the Interstate 110 exit. That same day, they had a preliminary hearing that they had to take Donovan to at the courthouse. Donovan's public defender did not show up. He had called in the last minute and said he couldn't make it. Officer Jones says that Donovan complained how lousy the system was and couldn't believe his attorney didn't show up. Donovan also had said, I never should have told that jerk Marty that I wanted that sign. This is all Marty's fault. Your Honor, and the members of the jury, if you will. Right there, Chris Donovan puts himself in jeopardy that he wanted the wrong way to not enter sign. After stating multiple times that he did not want to sign, pledged himself guilty with a single comment that he had made with Officer Pat Jones. 